the day of Pentecost has come. We have been spending time together each week being reminded that love is our religion and that our hearts have the spirit of Christ within us, helping us, guiding us, giving us strength and courage and overflowing gratitude for each other. All of this was inspired by the early Christian community, one that was often under difficult circumstances, but continued to support each other along the way. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. We create a temple of worship in our hearts that connects us across boundaries, distance, and time. But as we share this worship, we will stay connected. At the heart of the matter, we are connected through the spirit that makes us one in love. We are going to center our hearts as one to begin. Let's take a deep breath together. I invite you to place your hand on your heart and let's lightly tap together in a slow heartbeat rhythm. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation. Help us to take this time to center on you. For you made us, you gave us life, and you continue to be with us every moment. Every breath. Every step. Now hear this assurance from God. Be still, O oh heart, you're not alone. Your beat is shared with me. Come now and come and center here. Your mind secure and free. Let's take another deep breath, making sure our shoulders and any tension we feel in our bodies is letting go with the breath. Let's take another one. Let us pick up our heart stone, sometimes called a worry stone, and let our touch on its surface remind us that God's touch is within us, between us, and around us. As close and real as this object is in our hands right now is how close love is to us always. Let us imagine letting go of our worries for now into God's heart of love. We offer a prayer song of letting go. Into your care we offer now our worries, fear, and strife. We turn to you and know you're near, your light, our love and life. So now let us light our candles. And place 
our heart stones around it. We are thankful for the light of God's love and God's word in our lives. So today is called Pentecost Sunday. And so I thought we'd talk about what is Pentecost Sunday? Because it's a big day in the life of the church. Well, let's think about this. On a hot summer day, an electric fan can really help keep us cool. How does a fan help keep us cool? Hmm, what do you think? That's right, it keeps us cool by blowing air. I think I will turn the fan on now. Do you see any air coming out? No, I don't see any air coming out. How, well, if we can't see the air, how do we know the fan is working? Well, there's several ways we can tell the fan is working. One way you can tell the fan is working is that I have tied some red streamers to the front of it so we can see the air blowing those streamers. And the other way we know the fan is working is that we can feel the air blowing on our face. Yeah, see, I can feel it. We can't see air, but we can feel it. Finally, we know the fan is working because we can hear the sound of the air rattling the streamers. We can't see it, but we can hear it. You hear it? Yeah. Today is a special day with which many churches celebrate. It's called the Day of Pentecost. Here is how the story began. The Bible tells us that on the Day of Pentecost, Jesus' followers were all gathered together in one place, and God sent the Holy Spirit to give them the power to teach others about Jesus. Now, they couldn't see the Holy Spirit, so how did they know the Holy Spirit was there? Well, the 
Bible says they knew the Holy Spirit was there because they could hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind coming down. They couldn't see the Holy Spirit, but they could hear the sound of the wind, just as you can hear the air blowing from this fan. Then the Bible tells us they saw what seemed like flaming tongues of fire that came out and rested on their heads. They couldn't see the Holy Spirit, but they knew the Holy Spirit was there because they could see the flaming tongues of fire, just as we can see the red streamers blowing on the fan. Finally, the Bible tells us that they knew the Holy Spirit was there because they could feel his power. When they were filled with the Holy Spirit, he gave them to the ability to speak in languages they didn't know. So they could tell everyone about Jesus. They couldn't see the Holy Spirit, but they could feel his power in their life just as we can feel the air from the fan. The Holy Spirit is still with us today. We can't see him, but we can hear him. As he speaks to our hearts, we can see his moving in our life, and we can feel the power of his presence as he guides us through each day. So let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear Father, Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to be our teacher and guide. Help us to listen, obey as he teaches us how to tell others about Jesus. Amen. Hello, disciples. The Pentecost Special Offering supports the work of New Church Ministry. In partnership with our regions, this ministry helps to establish new communities of faith and helps to discern how they are to live out their call in their local context. The Holy Spirit equips us with new tools, new methods, listening to new voices, and hearing new stories. Remember, every church was once a new church. Your generous support of the Pentecost offering ensures that we will continue to be able to hear God's call as we emerge as new fire, a new church showing up for a new world. Thank you so much for your generosity. Today's scripture comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20 verses 19 through 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Happy Pentecost, Avon Christian Church. Will you pray with me? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The story of Pentecost from Acts is a familiar one. The crowds were gathered and the sound of a rushing wind came among the people and divided tongues rested upon them like fire and the disciples began to speak in every language. Many people were gathered and all heard the good news preached in his or her own language. All who were gathered felt the mighty power of the Holy Spirit in fire and wind and flame. However, there is another Pentecost story in the Gospel of John, one that is perhaps less well known and less flashy than the Acts account. 
Pastor Paula preached on this story during our Wind and Water series. After Jesus' resurrection, he appeared to his disciples who were hiding behind locked doors. Jesus greeted them with the words, Peace be with you, showing the signs of his hands and his side, the disciples rejoice at his presence. He again tells them, peace be with you as God has sent me, so I send you. And then he breathed on them, giving to them the Holy Spirit. It's a gentler, quieter account of the Holy Spirit than the scene in Acts, our usual imagery for the day of Pentecost. Instead of rushing wind and tongues of fire, she comes through the breath of the resurrected Christ. The Greek word for breath is also the same as the word for spirit, pneuma. So that in that moment, the spirit was poured out among the disciples with the simple inhalation and exhalation. Still and small in the midst of the peace and quiet, but no less powerful. In the Hebrew Bible, the word ruach was used to describe the breath of God, the wind, the spirit, first seen in the first chapter of Genesis, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless, void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept across the surface of the waters. It is that peaceful but powerful wind spirit which shaped the formless void of the world that Jesus breathes out and to the disciples. It is the same breath that God breathed into the first human nostrils, the breath that is now our breath. Breathing is something that seems so natural to us, something we don't even have to think about until we do. Three and a half years ago, I was in a serious car accident, and with five broken ribs, I suddenly found breathing to be quite difficult. Every breath was painful as my lungs inflated against my fractured ribs. I was given an incentive spirometer to breathe into by the doctor so I could exhale into it every few hours and I had to make the little thing go to the right place on the, the little gauge to ensure that my lungs were inflating properly and to help prevent pneumonia. Without that device, it would have been easy for me to take shallow breaths, just enough to get air into my lungs, the air I needed, but not enough to cause me pain. But that could have ended up with even more painful consequences. In many ways, after my accident, I had to learn how to breathe again, something that I never even remembered learning the first time. The first time I walked a labyrinth, it was interesting to see how quickly my breath fell in line with my prayers. As those of you who have walked the labyrinth before know, part of the journey is the prayer that you bring with you to the center and then the answer that you carry out. Unfortunately, those answers aren't always as clear or precise as we are looking for, but it's amazing to me that as I pray, I exhale the air from my lungs. And as I inhale, I listen for God's voice. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. This has been our pattern for the season of Easter. Each week we begin worship with a practice of centering our hearts as one, even while we were at a distance. We inhaled and exhaled. We listened for the beat of our hearts. We invited the spirit in to our midst and then we 
exhales, our fear and our worry, lifting them to God. If we move day by day without even thinking about the fact that we are breathing, Breathing in that very spirit that Jesus breathed on the disciples, the wind that God breathed into Adam's nostrils, then how do we expect to see the spirit moving in other ways? If we miss the breath going in and out of our own lungs, how can we possibly expect to see the wind and the fire? Is it possible that we miss the work of the Holy Spirit all around us or the call of the spirit on our lives? We are so focused on hearing the rushing wind, will we miss the still small voice that says to us, peace, the voice that sends us, fills us, forgives us, commissions us. What is incredible about the John Pentecost story is that it reveals to us part of the Holy Spirit that acts story does not. A spirit that is quiet yet ever present. A spirit that is in us and among every living thing. A spirit that guides us and empowers us. Earlier in the Gospel of John, Jesus is asked by a Jewish leader named Nicodemus, what does it mean to be born from above? Confused by how someone might be born again. And Jesus says to him, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The, blend, the wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. What we celebrate on this day of Pentecost, the birthday of the church, is that we too are born of the Spirit. And it is that Holy Spirit that dwells in us and empowers us for the work of the church. It is something that we should feel so natural within our own spirits. It is like breathing. We breathe in love, and then we exhale love. We breathe in forgiveness, and we exhale forgiveness. We breathe in peace and hope. We exhale peace and hope. We breathe in grace. We breathe out grace. This is the church filled with the Holy Spirit being church in the world. We as Christians do not live apart from the world, the earthly kingdom. We live and breathe in the midst of a world that does not appear as God envisioned. We are a part of a big C church, an institution that does not look as it was envisioned on the day of Pentecost. In the account of Pentecost and Acts, there were many peoples gathered who all spoke different languages and each heard the good news, the gospel, in their own language. The early church was a diverse one, and yet, Churches in our country today are one of the most segregated places in our society. 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings is still the most segregated hour in America. This week, as I considered Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit and the divine breath bestowed upon each of us as beloved children of God, two images came to my mind. The first, as our country surpassed 100,000 deaths to COVID-19 in less than three months, was the image of this illness that we are still learning so much about and the effect it has particularly on the lungs of those who contract it. 
We know serious cases which require the use of the ventilator to help those fighting the illness breathe. We know it is transmitted from person to person in droplets on our breath, somehow silently, sometimes unseen. The second image that has been brought to mind this week, which makes my heart ache as well, is the sight of George Floyd's murder at the hands of a Minneapolis police officer this week. His final words, I can't breathe. His words echo countless others of our brothers and sisters who have had their breath stolen from them by corrupt systems, by institutional racism, and even well-meaning, good Christian people. On this day of Pentecost, we remember that breath is sacred, the presence of God's love for each of us. We remember that day when the disciples received that spirit breathed on them by Jesus. And we receive that spirit once again. We pray in a world that is broken, we might be empowered by the spirit to breathe a bit of God's divine spark and love back into the world. We pray that the Holy Spirit might guide us as we discern the ways we have been complicit in institutions that perpetuate injustice. And we pray for the day that, as the prophet Amos says, foretold justice might roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. First, we breathe. And then we love as God has called us to love. We breathe. And then we act as God has called us to act. I'm going to close with a blessing written by one of my favorite pastor poets, Jan Richardson. It's called When We Breathe Together, a blessing for Pentecost Day. This is the blessing we cannot speak by ourselves. This is the blessing we cannot summon by our own devices, cannot shape to our own purpose, cannot bend to our will. This is the blessing that comes when we leave behind our aloneness, when we gather together, when we turn toward one another. This is the blessing that blazes among us when we speak the words strange to our ears when we finally listen into the chaos, when we breathe together at last. Amen. God, that is who you are. 
You never stop working, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 Way maker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 It is now time for us to go to God in prayer. I invite you at this time to call out and lift up any names and situations that you would like to take into this space. Please pray with me. God, our creator, God, our healer, God, our prayer answerer, God, our protector, God, our provider, God who is with us. We come to you today thanking you for this Pentecost moment, this Pentecost Sunday. 
God, we thank you that Jesus came, died, rose again, that we might be followers of Jesus, that we might be believers in you, God, that we might be redeemed. God, we thank you. We thank you for how you continue to be with us, just as Jesus promised that you would. God, even in the dark times, the dark days, the dark seasons, your light still shines within us, God. And we thank you. We thank you for your spirit who continues to manifest power and comfort and guidance in our lives, God. We thank you for you being so faithful, even when we aren't faithful to you. So God, we confess for those times that we are more afraid of our circumstances than our belief is in you, God. We confess, God, and we are so sorry for the doubt that we have experienced, God, for the fear that we have experienced, God. In our humanness, we come to you turning over all of those feelings, all of our experiences, all of these emotions, God, that have taken over us in this season that we're in. God, we ask that you would just shine bright in our lives. God, we ask that you would take our fear and that you would give us peace. God, that you would take our challenges and that you would rain down your joy upon us. God, that you would take our grief and wrap us up in your arms of comfort. God, we need you right now more than ever. And so here we are, our human selves, our weak selves, reaching out to you, asking God that you would fix our situations, that you would move in our situations. God, that you would show yourself strong in our lives, God. We are handing over our burdens, our cares, our worries, and our concerns because we still trust in you. No matter how doubtful, no matter how fearful, God, we know that you are bigger than all of our problems. So God, we thank you for this opportunity to come boldly to your throne. We thank you for hearing us and we thank you for answering us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now we recite the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Disciples, it is always a joy to gather together at the Lord's table. I'm reminded that it's not the frequency with which we gather at this table. It's the access that God has given through Jesus Christ. And through Jesus, we know that all are welcome to this table. We're also reminded of the covenant that God gives through Jesus. And it's a covenant that we recommit ourselves to as we gather around the table. The covenant that you and I have as fellow believers in Jesus Christ begins at this table by remembering the covenant that God has made with us. So as we eat and drink today, let us recommit and let us remember that all are welcome. It was on the night that Jesus was betrayed that he sat at the table with his disciples and after giving thanks, he took the bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to them saying, take and eat for this is my body broken for you. And in the same way, he took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them to drink, saying, This is the blood of a new covenant with God and God's creation, my blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Paul reminds us that as often as we eat of the bread and drink from the cup, 
we remember the Lord's death and suffering until he shall surely come again. The table of the Lord is now ready. There is room for all and there is enough for all. May we eat and drink in remembrance of the one who loved us so. Amen. For one final time in this Easter season, it is time to praise God and raise our endorphin levels as we improve our heart health physically and spiritually. So join us for our Easter season dance party, whether you are dancing from your chair or your bed or the couch or all across the living room, I invite you to join us. And now join with me with this affirmation one last time. We know Jesus is present among us. We know Jesus is present among us. Even in this very room. Even in this very room. We will not let fear be louder than love. We will not let fear be louder than love. But with glad hearts and rejoicing souls. But with glad hearts and rejoicing souls. We will sing God's praise. We will sing God's praise. For we are an Easter people. For we are an Easter people. Okay, today I have a special song for our final dance party. It was created by colleagues of ministry in different denominations all over the country and shared in a group I'm a part of as an offering for us to use for this Pentecost Sunday. I saw at least one familiar face to me at least, a disciple singer, Andrew Moran, but I love the spirit of this song for this day. So let us dance and sing together now one more time.
was great. I hope that you are feeling the spirit right now. So while we have our energy up, let's send some of that energy out into a world that needs it one more time in this Easter season. What message does our world need? Perhaps you will decide to create a way to let more and more people know the message of Christ. You are not alone. I am here. You have the fire of my love in your heart forever. What can we do to create more heartfulness in our household, in our family, in our relationships with those we cannot be with right now? How can we offer our hearts to those who are working so hard right now? How can we tell others that we will make it through? Thanks for joining us on this journey. I know when we began this Easter worship series, I just knew in my heart that we'd be back together by this day of Pentecost. While we know that there is still some more time apart as ahead as we prepare for the day when we will be able to worship in church together again, in person together again. I am grateful for all the ways we continue to be church, even when church doesn't look the way we expect it to. Next week, we will be beginning our new worship series for the summer, Spiritual Road Trip, a journey of faith through scripture and our national parks. I'm so excited for this summer road trip as our plans for this summer don't look the way that we imagine them. And I'm excited for the lessons we will learn along the way and the ways in which we will encounter God. So if you have pictures from some of your own adventures in our national parks across the country, please send them our way. You can also get the books our series uh, are based on two different devotional books uh, by Chalice Press, America's Holy Ground and America's Sacred Sites, and you can find those on Chalice Press's website or other places that you uh, buy books, and it will just give you an opportunity to go deeper in the scripture with us on this journey this summer. We'll only be visiting eight national parks, but we know that there are uh, 61 national parks and many more national sites uh, that uh, we might uh, explore that are depicted in these devotional books. I invite you now, if you have been joining us during this season and you are ready to take a step towards building your own relationship with Christ, uh, furthering your faith in God, I invite you to reach out to myself, Pastor.